began when I was young as a quite well serious filmmaker and and my early films had a, a great brooding sense of self-importance which uh, I look back at and I find quite amusing. Uh, while I do love those films, you know, a fan of, of um, Russian cinema and all of that. I think it was interesting that um, when, I, when I started in New Zealand, I wanted to, uh, very much to um, be a feature film director, but um, began in music videos and then from the su <coughs> success of that got into uh, television commercials which I really loved and enjoyed and in fact um, I loved the humour side of it and discovered that I had a sense of humour when it came to casting and performance and storytelling which was you know a, a, <laughs> the antithesis of what I thought I was and I think in a way that perspective gave me um, a, a very ironic view of what humour can be, particularly in commercials, um, which is also now translated to sort of my later films, because I've tried to, I think, um, look at a whole range of, of styles of films. I certainly know that um, what, I, what I truly love as a filmmaker um, is personal films, and uh, certainly from my point of view that's what I'm striving for. But I think that um, Working with the best, uh, the best people in advertising, I think that applies as well, which is which is great. I think it's a brilliant, uh, it's a brilliant uh, training ground to keep fit as a filmmaker. If you know what I mean. I've directed from t tiny to massive, and um, um, and I I do love. I mean, right now I'm doing a a, a very large, you know, quite quite absurd humour piece. Um, but it was a saying, I've kind of made my, my living from filming, you know, two idiots in a kitchen. And that's, I've done a lot of ads like that. So I've done a lot of, I think, you know, smaller, simple, great story dialogue pieces. I mean, I think some of the work that I've truly loved is the Sky TV ads that I did in New Zealand. I loved working on those and um, even going right back to the NEC commercial that I shot in 1994, which sort of was the first major commercial that I had done. Um, yeah, again, it was two people talking on a television. So I find I go from a whole range of different uh, scripts that go from small or, or to massive. And I think the one thing that I've always done is um, been eclectic in my style because I find while I have a, uh, there's a unity to my sense of humor in a way, every script Ha needs a different style and a different approach, I think. I think I've been lucky enough to work with some really great creators. I think, I think, the, um, I think advertising is about ideas and writing, and uh, I think the best ads that I've ever worked on have been um, great pieces of writing, regardless of technique or regardless of what you do as a director. But I think um, as a director you often um, need to make the choice of how anonymous you need to be in order to make a great ad. Or also how to use all your technique or all of the things and crafts that you've learned over the years to turn something that de demands film technique, how to turn that into something that's realised completely. I think that is often, you know, it's often when do you, when do you show your technical skill or when do you just sit back and go, that technical skill is going to get in the way. Those, those, I think those decisions are vital as a director. Not to show off sometimes. I didn't find it difficult. I mean, I think because also I grew up as a young boy at school seeing directors like Ridley Scott and Hugh Hudson and, um, and loving their work knowing they came from commercials. And so in a way, um, I was quite excited. Um, to get involved in commercials, even though I, I was starting as a serious filmmaker, and I, I uh, you know, uh, I've, I found that, uh, you know, a lot of the directors that go into movies go back to commercials, and and I have done that, uh, you know, I've done films and then commercials and so on, and I think shooting commercials is enormously um, satisfying from the point of view of having so much variety 
so many different ideas to work with, so many different styles to explore too, particularly because I get a lot of eclectic work. You know, I'll get an action piece or I'll get a big drama piece or I'll get something that's, that's parroting something or I'll get something that's a one-shot commercial and I'm lucky to work in a whole different group of styles. As, we, uh, as I think is, is um, common with all of the, the finest directors that I know in, in television commercials. So to answer to your question, I found it not difficult because I began really wanting to work um, uh, as a feature director and I shot three short films before I ever shot a television commercial or a music video. So I kind of started from a filmmaking side and then got into ads and then went back to filmmaking. So they just kept um, feeding on each other, which was great. Well, I think a, certainly making a television commercial is all about collaboration. I think because you're working with somebody else's script and idea and particularly when it also comes to collaborating effectively with a client, I think what's really important is that they, they feel that, um, that you're aware of what they're wanting and that, that there's a lot of, uh, I think a lot of listening going on makes a lot of, you know, the best work because I think the client trusts agency, agency trusts the director and everybody, I think, works together from that point of view. So I think collaboration is absolutely essential. Um, I certainly think that, you know, there have been times when, you know, you work with clients or agency or people where you, where you think that, you know, they really don't have a grasp on what they're, what they're doing or what they're wanting. And I think it works, works, sorry, it works, you know, in the opposite way as well. But I do think that yeah, the best people in the industry, you want to work with them, so collaborating makes complete sense. In film, um, I think when you, if, you, if, you're, if you're working as an author-based director, then I think um, collaboration, you, I think you're always choosing to work with people who are going to enhance your work. Um, <laughs> that bizarre quote where you go, why hire a dog and bark yourself? You know, <laughs> and it's the idea of working with editors who improve your work. It, you know, directors of photography, writers, and of course actors. I love actors and, and particularly performance has been the one thing that I've, um, I've always loved doing and I've always loved working with, um, with really, good direct, uh, really, good, sorry, really good actors. Well, I think I've seen a lot, a lot of us all manage it in, in various ways from um, you've got to be beep kidding or you, you know, um, um, you know, what are they smoking to, you, you know, to also, okay, how do we, how do we um, manage this so that we don't, you know, lose the essence of everything we've got, know how to make changes that feel like there's a priority to it. I've always seen there's an A, B and a C list and there's sometimes things on the C list that don't matter and there's things on the B list you fight for, but the A list will completely ruin what you've done. So I think it's a matter of, um, just dealing with that because, you know, um, I, I've always found that it's, um, you got more chance, I think, ultimately, if you feel like you're listening to what they're saying and you, you're, you're trying to give your, um, you know, your best interpretation of what they are wanting or, or trying to explain to them why what they're doing isn't going to solve anything or, or that it's not working. So, but ultimately, you, you know, you, you're making their ad. So, it's interesting. I think that um, I grew up in a generation, because now I'm in my mid-40s, um, where when I began directing, it was extremely, you know, it wasn't, the, the technology wasn't there for things to happen easily or instantly. So, you know, I was learning on film and cutting and, and there was, um, I was still probably the last of the, um, I suppose the generation that uh, um, where I, mean, I was I was taught by directors and, and taught by editors I was taught to cut and and so on and I think that um, that sort of la the last of the apprenticeship period um, and that I think helped me understand that um, it took a, a lot of discipline uh, to want to make films uh, just because it was you know, very difficult. I mean, when I was a kid, when I was 10, starting to make films, <clears throat> I'd have to wait a week for the Super 8 film to come back. And, you know, and I, it was, uh, 
you know, it was interesting. It was just like um, that sort of time period seems absurd now and it doesn't make any sense. But um, I think also back then when I was making my first short films and, and doing my music videos, I mean, I was learning everything. There was no film school when I was, uh, when I was a young filmmaker in New Zealand. So I was self-taught with everything. And um, so it took an enormous amount of work. So I think in, in for, for, for younger people in whatever area it is about at that age, putting in everything you can in as much effort as possible to learn the hard way, if you know what I mean, regardless of the technology, but really put in the time and the effort. That would be my advice. Because I think ultimately as you um, mature and, and grow into uh, whatever your career is going to be, you'll be relying on, I think, um, the knowledge of uh, the experience that you have. It, there seems to be so many different styles that are coming together and meshing together. Um, there seems to be an overload of information that's coming in, so things are, are um, I suppose, uh, having an impression for a shorter amount of time. So, uh, and a lot of things are referenced from different time periods you know, from just 10 years ago, 20 years ago. So when you're looking at, I think, media, you're looking at influences in film and so on, it just seems like there's such a mass of, of, of different influences that it's becoming, I think, quite meshed and confused and like some giant, you know, super supreme pizza with a million different things coming from a million different places. And it's all happening so quickly and so fast. And it's, and it's, and in particular, it is borrowing from so many other areas that uh, it kind of defines itself by being everything thrown together. And I think uh, that, I think right now is, um, I think particularly for, um, for a lot of the younger generation, it's quite confusing going, who am I? I've got a number of films that um, I've been developing and, and working on, um, some television, uh, because television seems a very, I think now it's becoming a, I mean a lot of the best, you know, a lot of the best film, if you could say, that's around is, is television. And I'm very interested in, in, uh, in doing that, particularly in comedy. Um, and I love ads and I've been, I'm working, you know, as hard as I can doing those as well. So. Just trying to keep doing the whole range of things, which is great.